So what happens if you run out of content ideas? What if you decide to start a YouTube channel or a podcast or you start to write content and you think, what if one day I just don't know what to say or don't know what to write? In this video, I'm gonna talk about how you can, first of all, never run out of content ideas. And second, I'm gonna show you how to plan out a year's worth of content in one day. For that, stick around. My name is Lane. This is my channel. I love to help digital entrepreneurs start and grow their passive income style online businesses. So subscribe if you want to know how to get a kickstart in your entrepreneur online business journey. And I want to offer you something for free. Just to say thank you for stopping by. Go to lanesebring.com slash super simple. Pick up my free super simple guide to your first $500 online. It will basically map out the entire process that I use to run two online businesses, generating multiple six figures a year, selling online courses, affiliate products, using all organic reach. Go to lanesebring.com slash super simple to grab your free copy. So I wanna start with a story. In 2014, I started a humble little blog called Preaching Donkey. Since then, that Preaching Donkey blog has turned into a complete online business with courses and books and consulting and coaching and content and all that. But in 2014, it was just a blog. And I remember feeling a little bit of anxiety around the idea of committing to something that people might actually start to read and find out about. And I remember thinking, what if I run out of ideas? I mean, what if I just say all the things that I think should be said about this topic? In that online business, I'm helping pastors preach with confidence and clarity. But back in those days, I was just like, I'm gonna help people communicate better when they preach. So here's my ideas. And I had like 10 ideas and I was like, what happens when I'm done with these 10 ideas? But the most important thing I did in that moment was not to try to think about what if I run out of ideas? It was more that I just committed to making a piece of content back in those days, every single Tuesday. I had to write something and I had to hit publish. And that one discipline made all the difference. But I still had a problem because I was still showing up to my computer every Tuesday thinking, what am I gonna write today? What I did is I developed a plan to try to get way ahead in my content, and I'm gonna walk through that plan with you in this video, and you're gonna see that it's actually way easier to get ahead and to stay ahead and never run out of content ideas, because I'm gonna show you in this video why running out of ideas is impossible if you do it right. So I'm gonna address that concern right out of the gate. What happens if you run out of content ideas? The short answer is you won't. If you set things up right, you can't run out of ideas. As you make content and build an email list and an audience, you're going to get questions and feedback. Those pieces of feedback and questions become a never ending well of content ideas for you. And even more importantly, it's completely okay to make the same piece of content more than once. A lot of times when people are new to this, they think, well, I already made a piece of content about XYZ topic. I guess I can never make that piece of content again. Well, that's gonna be a hard road to go down because you're likely going to teach the same types of concepts and the same key ideas over and over and over again. And so if your rule is, well, I've made a piece of content about it, so I can't do it again because that's gonna be like against the rules, well, hate to break it to you, but number one, there are no rules. It's your business. And number two, several months down the road, a year down the road, if you do the same piece of content, there's a lot of things that are different. Number one, you're a different person. You're coming to the table with a new set of experiences. Second, you've gotten feedback and questions and comments from that first time you did the content and all the content you've done in between that you can now look at and readjust. Maybe you're answering a different question. Maybe you're tackling it from a different angle. And then finally, not everyone in your audience has seen every piece of content that you make. We know all the content that we make and we have a few really committed super fans that we all love and appreciate that might watch every piece of content. But most people are kind of coming in and out of your content. Maybe they weren't here six months ago when you made that piece of content. Maybe they're just now with you and they wanna hear you talk about this thing that they haven't heard you talk about yet. And your super fans, the ones that are really committed that you've built a deep connection with, guess what? They love you and appreciate you. And so if you make the same piece of content again, and you're coming at it from a new angle, a fresh perspective, 
they're going to be happy to hear it again from you. So you cannot run out of content ideas if you're paying attention to what people are saying, the questions they're asking, and you're not afraid to revisit things that you've done in the past with a fresh perspective. So you're just not going to run out of content ideas. With that foundation laid, I want to talk about how to plan an entire year of content in one day because there's lots of value in just sitting down and mapping out what this year could look like and getting it all on paper or on a spreadsheet so that you just have it and you no longer have to come to the table every week like I did for so many years and just look at a blank screen and say, what am I gonna write today? Those days are over, we're gonna fix that problem right now. The first step is, by this point, you should have already nailed down your niche. Your niche is really a collection of three questions. Who you're gonna help, what you're gonna help them with, and how you're gonna help them. If you don't know that, then start there before you start making your content plan. But assuming that you have a really strong, solid niche, that is not just a topic, but it's the problem you're solving. And you know very clearly who you're helping, what you're helping them with, and how you're helping them. All that is mapped out. Now we're gonna take that niche and we're gonna break it down into four or five kind of subcategories within the niche. Think of these as buckets that your content are gonna fit into. So you have the big, huge bucket that is your niche, and then you have four little mini buckets that are the content buckets. Using Preaching Donkey as an example, my big niche in that brand is that I help pastors preach with confidence and clarity. That's what I do. Pastors, not every pastor preaches, so I've narrowed it down from pastors to pastors who preach, and I want to help them preach with confidence and clarity. I want them to have confidence in their message, in their delivery of that message, and I want clarity. I want them to be able to know that they are communicating the ideas they want to communicate and that those ideas are landing on their audience and making an impact. So that's my broad category. But within that, I've got four main content buckets, sermon preparation, sermon delivery, church leadership, and lessons for pastors. All of my content fits within one of those four buckets. So some content might be about sermon preparation, where I'm talking about how to write sermons, how to outline sermons. Some content might be about sermon delivery, where I'm talking about how to be on stage and make eye contact or do stage movements or how to speak well. Other content might be about church leadership, where I'm talking about how to lead your staff or cast vision in your church around an initiative. And then lessons for pastors is this category where sometimes there's something that happens in my space that is newsworthy in my niche and I give comment to it and lessons that pastors can learn. So those are the four areas where I look at my big niche and I break it down into subcategories. So the first thing you're gonna do, and this should be pretty quick because you're very familiar with your niche. Take your niche, break it down into four categories. We'll call them buckets. Once you've done that, you're gonna make a list of 10 to 12 ideas per bucket. And when I say ideas, what I mean is a tentative title or a working title and then a bulleted summary of what you're gonna talk about in that piece of content. Using Preaching Donkey again as an example, I could go to sermon prep and say, I'm gonna make a video about outlining your message. So I might make a working title that says, how to outline your sermon in 30 minutes or less. Then I'm gonna make a few bullets that are going to give me some guidance when I sit down to make that video. So it's gonna be the first thing I need to do, the second thing I need to do, the third thing I need to do. I'm gonna think those through and I'm gonna write them down and I'm gonna put this in a spreadsheet. By the way, if you're not yet on the waiting list for the Six Figure Fast Lane, which is coming out very soon, definitely get on the waiting list because I map all of these concepts out in the exact order and system that you need to do them to build your six-figure online business. You can go to lanesebring.com slash fastlane to get on the wait list so you'll get all the updates and you won't miss a thing. lanesebring.com slash fastlane. Once I have these bullets laid out, I'm going to move on to the next thing. The key isn't to map out the entire thing here. It's to give me ideas so that when I come back to this spreadsheet and it's time to make a piece of content, I've got the working title and I've got some bullets and maybe a summary of what I want to do with this video. 
From there, I can take it and make the video. I've already done the research and the legwork. So if you have four or five categories and you put 10 to 12 ideas in each bucket or each category, you end up with 40 to 50 ideas, which is a year's worth of content. When I say a year's worth, I mean at least one major piece of content a week. And then from there, you can share it in different ways. You can break it up however you want. I'm talking about your one piece of pillar content, your podcast episode, your main YouTube video, your main blog post, however you do your content, your main piece of pillar content, you've got it nailed down for a year or for the better part of the year with a little bit of wiggle room in there for you to get inspiration in the moment. Now, the question you might be asking is great, but how do I come up with these 10 to 12 ideas? Like you've told me what to do, but how? I'm gonna give you four ways to come up with these 10 to 12 ideas per bucket. Number one, look at your competitors' top performing videos, podcast episodes, post, whatever. Look at the top performing pieces of content that your competitors have. And don't look to copy, but look for patterns. What are they talking about? Why is it working? And can you get inspiration for your online business, for your content? You wanna look at like what has popped off and what has popped off recently and what can you learn from it? So when I'm looking for content ideas, I'm gonna to look to see what's working, what are people responding to, and how can I make my content even better? Number two, read through any questions, comments, or feedback that you've gotten from your audience, whether through email, whether on social media, on your posts, on your YouTube videos, read through every bit of it and make notes. And so if somebody asks a question, like they want clarity on a piece of content, make a video about that question. And you don't have to do it right then and there. Sometimes I will respond to a comment and say, this is such a good question, I'm gonna make a video about this. Now, I'm not promising to make a video about it next week, but I'm gonna put it on my spreadsheet and it's going to happen at some point, especially if I see that question come up more often. So read through the comments, questions. This is where you really have a never ending well of content generation ideas. Number three, ask your audience what they want to see from you. So email your list or get on social and say, what do you want me to talk about that I either haven't talked about or you want me to go deeper on? And then finally, number four, go to YouTube's search feature, put in your keywords and see what it auto fills. A lot of times you'll see exactly what people in your space are looking for just by what YouTube suggests, what they auto fill. I use this all the time. And it's a wonderful way to make sure that whatever you're making content on is exactly what people are searching for. And the most important thing with all of this, don't overthink your content. The key is to show up consistently over time. And what happens is you become more efficient at making content. You become better at responding to your audience and meeting them exactly where they want you to be with your content. It's just a better overall product when it's intentional and consistent over time. Consistency over time is far better than just waiting for the perfect inspiration. So make a good plan, follow the plan, and use this exact process, and I think you're going to love it. By the way, this is part of a newsletter that I do every week called the Six Figure Fast Lane. This gets emailed out to my list, and so if you're not on my list, you're missing out on all the fun over there. Go to lanesebring.com slash super simple. That gets you my super simple guide to your first $500, and you'll get subscribed to this newsletter. Check out this video right here where I'm gonna walk you through the process of building your business in the next three months. So click right there and I'll see you in that video.